Hey guys, uh, so episode two here of the pairing the Dubot M1 to the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Um, I plan to post a video uh, once a week, probably every Tuesday or so. Um, but unfortunately, I think it's been a week and a half since the first video because I ran into uh, quite a lot of problems actually. Um, first off, the I went to plug the Dubot in. Actually, I did plug the Dubot in, um, and I'll go over that here in this video and show you like the setup and everything. Um, I think I started the robot three times, and then on the fourth time, when I went to power it on, the lights flashed on, and then everything went dead. Um, you go to, and then I kept going to press the power button. Nothing was happening. Um, so I started panicking, reached out to Dubot and uh, was asking them some questions uh, about, it seemed like a fuse blew or something like that. I had taken off the back panel and the bottom to see if there, I could find a fuse or something like that. Um, and then there are no fuses. So I checked the power unit. There's the wire that comes from the wall to the power unit. And then there's a wire that goes from the power unit to the robot. Uh, what had ended up happening was apparently the cord is a third party item, so I guess I can't blame Dubot so much, but the connector that goes from the power unit to the robot, the back side of it, the power cord had disconnected from the connector. So it's supposed to show 48 volts and it did at the power unit. And then I traced the wire that right before it got to the robot and it was dead. There was no voltage coming through. So after a couple days of stress, I had to tear that plug apart uh, resolder the connection and then it's back up and running. So uh, it was kind of fun because I got to take the robot apart, seal the parts, or seal the, the internals and stuff like that and everything looks great and uh, kind of better than I expected as far as uh, design and uh, like the bearings and tolerant, you know, how, how the internals are built. Um, but then I got that going and everything worked good. Um, I have a um, I have two computers. I have a Mac, MacBook Air, no, MacBook Mini for my desktop computer, and then I have my old laptop, which is a Microsoft Surface Pro. Uh, so I hooked it all up through, thir surf through the Surface Pro, um, downloaded the software, hooked up the robot, and uh, it was actually moving perfectly. But I had the idea that I wanted to switch to just using my Mac, because that's what I use normally. So I downloaded Parallels, um, to run Windows on my Mac computer and then upload the software onto the Parallels, which is lets you run Windows inside your Mac. So the issues with that were um, once I downloaded Parallels, the first time I went to install Windows, it didn't have the internet. Wasn't a big deal, but it's supposed to, so I had to redo the whole thing and then I got the internet. Um, and then it automatically, when you upload the software for the Dubot, it automatically pulls in the FTDI drivers, the basically the USB driver. So when you connect this via USB to the computer, um, they can see each other and communicate. So it automatically does that when you upload the software. Um, but because of the way Windows runs inside of my Mac, the drivers aren't compatible for the cross parallels between <laughs> Mac and PC. Um, long story short, I ended up going to the FTDI, uh, the driver's website, and they have a specific version for running Windows 11 ARM 64 on a Mac computer and had to download that. And once I did that, everything was working well now. Um, so I actually haven't fully pulled up that program or put everything together and, uh, run it in this way, but I know it'll work now that the robot shows up in the USB. So I was going to show you how I got the robot set up just for momentary, and uh, we'll go through on the computer and uh, do a sample program. Okay, uh, right now the robot is just sitting on the counter. It's not bolted down. Um, it's pretty balanced when it's like that and the arm is bent this way. Once the arm goes straight, it does get heavy this way and want to fall this way. Um, but I, for right now, uh, I was just going to show it in this configuration. So here's the 48 volt power unit. So this plug will plug into the wall, comes into the power unit, and then comes out of here 
and then into this, uh, this is where the power comes into the robot. So this inside of this black plug here is where the connection had failed. And it's kind of hard, you can't really see, but um, I pulled this off, redid it, and everything works well. Um, so that's power. This is the in the input X or the IO unit. Um, right now, the only thing plugged into it is four wires is for the emergency stop. But then it has, I think, yeah, you can see a digital output 18, digital output 17, digital input 18, digital input 19. Uh, so there's these are some of the input outputs on here. Um, then those are those two. So both are needed to run it. So um, they have to be plugged in. And then this is the USB cord. And you can see, chase it, and it's plugged into my Mac currently right there. Um, so I'll just show you the process. Plug her in. And then you'll see that just clicked. Power on, everything's good. And then all you do here is you press this for three seconds. Lights come on. You can hear the fan running. Um, and then this usually goes blue. It does. This is kind of like a warm-up thing. It does that. And then I believe, yeah, it'll turn green. So once it turns green, you just heard that click. That was the motors energizing. And now it's blue here, which means I believe it's operational. Uh, yeah. So when it's blinking green, it's operational. So um, I'm going to pull you up on the computer side, and I will show you the inside of the software, and we can make a, a simple program and hopefully make this thing move. All right, uh, so here you can see I'm inside the Mac side of my uh, computer, and if I switch over here, it's now on Windows. So it's running Windows 11, um, and I've downloaded the M1 Studio software. It, you see it up here on the left by the trash can, uh, so it adds the icon and uh, puts the software in there, so I got it up and running here. Uh, when I first downloaded it, everything is in Chinese, so it kind of freaked me out because I couldn't read anything and had to figure out how to get it to switch over. So the, the very first button here, settings, is the only thing, it was language, so it, was, it looked like this, and obviously I saw English, but when I selected English, it just said this, nothing happened. So what we ended up having to do is once you switch to English, you have to close out the program and then reopen it. And when you reopen it, it turns into uh, the English version. So automatically, once I got the drivers situated, the FTDI drivers, um, it then started saying COM3. And I know COM3 is a Windows communication. Um, if you plug a USB into a Mac, it's some... TDI or something weird, not COM communication. So uh, that is now the robot, I know for a fact. So if I hit connect, uh, okay. It did not connect. Okay, now it says it's unable. Um, all right, I am physically unplugging the robot right now and then plugging it back in. Okay, so you see it changed here. Yep, now we're at COM3. Now I hit connect. Oh, I wonder if that was just because... Oh, so once it connects, it switches over and says disconnect. Uh, so that's how you know it's connected. But I don't. the reason it didn't do that is maybe because it was already plugged in when I started the software. But you can see now over here, all of the accesses have become live. So if I uh, jog up, um, the robot is jogging up and so on forth. So this is joints one, two, three, and then four is the, the wrist on it. Um, so here's the interface. This is the M1 Studio specifically for the M1 robot. And then uh, they have playback mode, which is all kind of controlled here. Uh, you could set your velocity and speed, and then you could jog the robot to a specific posi position. And then if you hit um, add motion command, it then in here is saving those coordinates. Uh, it saves the um, speed and all that. And then it was set to move J, which is a joint move. Um, I don't want to get into the deep ends of programming robots, but so you can change it from an arc, um, a straight motion, or a circle. And then into the straight motions, you got move J, move L, and jump. Um, 
Pump snare high just hit that again, and then this is as simple as you can just right click it to delete it. Um, so this is the playback mode, so you can just jog it over, record these buttons. Um, same with the input outputs, you could kind of just do everything in this this scenario. Or in this tab here is the script mode. Again, here's the input outputs, here's the motions. Um, it is coming up with these question marks, which I don't know, but Truthfully, I'm not going to be programming in this script mode. Um, and then lastly, lastly, they advertise Blockly, which is a, I think it's Google's programming language. Um, and it isn't popping up here. So if you go to Tools, right here is Blockly. So if I click that, it then launches Blockly, and now it's a tab up here. Um, and there's plenty of tutorials on how to use Blockly. Uh, on the internet, but like I said, it's just a, a programming language for the um, started by Google. Um, they all do the same thing. Um, they are all kind of if-then statements and kind of points and do you know telling the robot to do the same thing. Um, this robot also comes with a you can see oops, that's, so that's Windows. If you go to Tools here, uh, they have a laser engraver. Um, IO Assistant, so if I click that, here's the laser engraver, so you can upload um, different things, different shapes and stuff like that, and the arm will move in those rotations. Um, so I'm going to kind of write a quick program here, and then um, I'll swap between showing you the video of the program running and then actually showing the robot move per the program. So uh, instead of having you watch me stumble through making this quick, easy program, uh, I'll just do it and then go over it with you in here in a second. All right, uh, so what I've done is I jogged the robot to a set position, and then in here I selected move J. Um, I changed the velocity down to 30 and left the jerk at 50. Um, so I wanted to slow it down because it's not bolted to the table currently. So you'll see it's, it still moves pretty quick at 30%. At 100%, it's moving really fast, and it, it's kind of violent for just sitting on the table. Um, so I moved it down 30%, and then what you do is you just hit Add Motion, and it added this first motion. So you can see the type here is a Move J. Uh, this is the coordinate. There's the jerk and the velocity settings, and um, the arm orientation is to the right, so that means the elbow is to the right as opposed to the left, so you can see they're all to the right. Um, then what I did is I just moved the robot to another random location. I set the move J to a jump, and then I hit add that location, and you can see it says jump here. What's that? What that does is it will go all the way up in the Z, move over to where the point is in the X and Y, and then it'll go down in the Z. Uh, so it's as if it's jumping over something. Uh, and then next I jogged to a third location, and then I did a move L. And what a move L is a direct, direct linear line, so it's a move linear um, from one point to another. Um, so that's a more of a precise or an accurate thing. When you see on robots a lot of time, it'll be moving directly o down over something to pick it up and then directly up. Whereas a move J would go from point to point, but because of the joints, it might actually end up turning into an arc. It's just doing the fastest move between two points. Um, and then lastly, if you go down here, I added two seconds. You just set it to two and then hit add the point. Um, and then it adds the two seconds. And like I said, you could put IO commands so I could trigger uh, like a gripper to open or something. Um, and then up here, you could save the program. You could open an old program. Um, and then this infinite loop button, I click that, so it'll do these commands, wait two seconds, and then it's just going to loop infinitely. Uh, I think I'll take that off infinite loop, and I'll do it uh, three times. Um, I don't even know what this is, so we'll skip it for now, but um, I'm going to pull up the video here and uh, hit play while you can watch the robot go. Okay, so the program is still as it is on my computer still looping it three times so I'm gonna attempt to do this so like I said it's not bolted down to the table right here uh, it's just on it so I'm gonna keep my hand on it and then attempt to hold the camera and attempt to press play <laughs> while the video is going uh, so hopefully 
this will work because I can use the bring the mouse over here maybe. Um, and then we will. I'll move we'll over to here where it says start. Move you over here, and then I'll hit play, and it should loop twice. So there's the jump. There's a J move, L move, and then a two second delay. Move, jump, J move, L move. Cool, that was it. Oh, I lied, it's going again. Oh, it's on three loops. I thought I had said it's two. Okay, so that was the complete now. Um, and you can see the, the play button is now activated again, but it does say loops three. Um, so there it is. So that was at 30%. Um, like I said, I my hands are too slow to click the mouse and then get on to the robot, so I think I'll leave it at 30%. All right, uh, there's some quick action of setting up the robot, getting some movements out of it. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to go over the CAD design of the bracket that the robot's going to sit on and how it's going to mount to these cabinets. Um, and then I will bring the camera to work uh, where I have a Haas machine and I'll actually machine, uh, show a little machining video of just the brackets and the assembly. And then we'll get the bracket mounted to these cabinets and get the robot mounted to the, uh, to the bracket. And, uh, That'll probably be the next video, and then following that, we'll start the uh, actual programming sequence to get the operation going. Uh, real quick, just to point, because it's four axes, I was planning to make this little handle here. Um, it's just got two bolts through it, and I was gonna make like a, kind of like a ping pong flap to where it can come around, grab the flap, and use that to open the door. Um, but I'll probably cover all that. Um, not in the next video with the, the plate, but in the third the third video in the series. So uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, I am checking them and answering them. And if you have any suggestions on <laughs> how to program it, how to make it smoother, better, easier, uh, I'm happy to hear them. And uh, thanks. Uh, if you want to subscribe, I'm going to, like I said, try and uh, upload a video every week in this series until this is officially um, pulling parts out and putting in new build plates. So thanks for watching.